Welcome to the MTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Health confirms measles on a cruise ship and provides assistance. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney is lauded for presenting an appropriation bill that is comprehensive and relatable. The creative industry is to receive increased government support. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the MTN Nouvelle Arcoyot. The Department of Health and Wellness continues to address the matter involving a confirmed case of measles on board a cruise ship which entered our ports on Tuesday, April 30, 2019. Given the highly infectious nature of measles, along with the possibility that other persons on board the vessel may have been in contact with and are now possibly infectious due to this disease, a decision was made not to allow persons to disembark. This decision to quarantine the ship is in keeping with the health laws of St. Lucia. Dr. Merlene Fredericks-James is the Chief Medical Officer. Our epidemiological investigation aboard the ship has verified that the confirmed case, as well as other crew members, are presently stable, but remain under surveillance by the ship's doctor. Continued surveillance is necessary as the incubation period for measles ranges from 10 to 12 days before symptoms in exposed persons occur. The Department of Health and Wellness and other agencies continue to provide support and welfare as needed by, this, by the ship. Today, the ship's doctor requested 100 doses of the measles vaccine, and this is currently being provided from our supplies at no cost. St. Lucia's public health response is being coordinated with other local agencies and partners, and we remain in discussion with regional and international health agencies, such as the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFO. The chief medical officer noted that there are currently large outbreaks in several countries, and as such, every precaution must be taken to protect the island. Measles is spread through droplets, from the nose or mouth of infected persons when they cough or sneeze, sometimes even during speaking. Early symptoms include high fever, runny nose, red eyes, and tiny white spots on the inside of the mouth. A rash may then develop starting on the face and upper neck and then spreading throughout the body. Measles can be particularly severe in young children who are not immunized. Infection with measles can be prevented if persons are fully immunized against the disease. And we wish to remind all persons that the measles vaccine is available locally, it's available free of charge, and it is actually provided routinely during our routine um, immunization program for children. But if um, adults have reviewed their status and realized that they are not immunized, they can visit the nearest wellness center where the vaccine would be provided. And that was Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlene Fredericks-James. Government strategy to ensuring citizen safety and security, as articulated by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney, during the delivery of the Appropriation Bill 2019-2020 is advancing. Here's Janelle Norville. Citizen safety and security as indicated by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney in his 2019-2020 budget address is a key area earmarked for urgent action in the medium-term development plan. According to the Prime Minister, citizen safety will see 12 game changes in three focus areas with the goal of a 45% reduction of serious crime by the end of the strategy term in 2022 and a 30% reduction in repeat offending by that same year. This approach will focus on better policing and greater efficiency in the legal system. Minister for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Senator the Honorable Herman Gale Francis, during the sitting of Senate, highlighted some of the strategies to be undertaken. The police will reduce criminal activity by undertaking the various operations, including patrols, surveillance, and intelligence gathering throughout the financial year. Next month, we will be turning out 45 new police officers. This will assist us in doing the patrols that are needed. More officers will be recruited during this financial year. We will partner with other agencies, community groups, and schools through communication, meetings, lectures, and other social engagements. The police will be conducting traffic checks aimed at reducing the number of road accidents and other traffic violations. 
to that regard, we are going to be looking at looking at speed guns and the breathalyzer test. So that when I am in Taiwan, these are two of the interventions that I will be looking at to get back here as quickly as possible. Senator the Honorable Herman Gil Francis explained that police officers have been permanently attached to the prosecution unit and will be provided with the necessary training so as to enhance their capabilities to provide the required support. Also under citizen safety, a parole system is expected to be introduced alongside a strong rehabilitation program. The minister expounded. We want to coordinate and collaborate on intelligence between the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Borderly Correctional Facility aimed at reducing crime on the streets and improved data collection and analysis on gangs and crime trends. We will also have a parole. In doc they are now going to be introducing the parole and probation. I will talk a little later about this. We are promoting public safety through effective supervision of offenders on probation. Promote lawful and productive lifestyles among probationers and assist courts with managing offenders and juveniles at risk. Crime prevention and detection is another area being strengthened that will benefit from a stronger police presence in hotspot areas. There will be increased foot and mobile patrols on the front line where most needed. Additionally, greater surveillance capabilities are now available to the police with the building out of the $5.8 million Safe City CCTV project in Castries, of which $1.8 million has been allocated for 2019-2020, and more focus will be placed on community policing to strengthen community involvement in fighting crime. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose, during the budget debate spoke to the proposed plans for the creative industries for the period 2019-2020. A total of EC $500,000 has been allocated to the training, building capacity and development programs by the Cultural Development Foundation. The minister informed that data collected via a CDF mapping exercise indicated that there are 40 persons who have been registered and are directly employed in the arts. Of the 400 registered creative workers, 67% of them are male and 33% as are female. And this is indeed instructive because as more of our males always appear to be, more of our males appear to be pursuing um, the path of creativity, you know, areas of creativity as a profession. And so this is something that we, we're heartened about. Um, we see the crisis with the young men in our society, and we believe that we're on the right path in terms of opening up that area to allow more young men um, to come in and find, itself, find, find themselves and their passion. The minister stated that a total of 226 persons were trained this year in the area of creative arts. We therefore remain committed to strengthening the curriculum for schools um, and of course with the School of Excellence coming on board. It's not a physical structure you'll see, but what you will see is a curriculum that is enriched um, to cater for the arts and of course to provide a clear pathway for all, all who wish to pursue the arts as a career. Senator Belrose explained that the government of St. Lucia is collaborating with the Organization of American States and the Global Environmental Fund to produce opportunities for persons interested in the creative arts across the tourism sector. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Meantime, Independent Senator Adrian Auger lauded Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney for presenting an appropriation bill that is comprehensive and relatable to the ordinary man. Senator Auger believes that the setting of specific targets for priority areas is the right way to go. During his contribution to the debate on the Appropriation Bill 2019-2020, on April 30th, Independent Senator Adrian Auger was encouraged by the emphasis on post-secondary and tertiary enrollment as one of high priority. The senator also lauded government's increased attention to culture and the creative industries, while adding that more direct intervention can take place with the injection of grants, technical assistance and training. We have people teaching creative arts in secondary schools who are not sufficiently qualified. We need, we need stronger choreographers, we need stronger um, um, teachers of visual arts, performing arts, etc. The Senator School of Music is laboring on under some rather trying circumstances. We need to support this especially, but not only, but especially since we 
um, recognize that the performing arts feeds right into our tourism product. Um, the temptation is to support the music sector, but the music sector is already substantially on its way. And while it's, it's um, attractive and it, it, it may be eye-catching, and it's, 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 the, it's the subsector that needs the least support. In commenting on government's efforts at furthering the development of the music industry, the senator made a case for the subsectors that feed the music industry to be given greater attention. There are other subsectors, visual performing, which do not have the support that they should, and who, whose skills are necessary to support the very music sector that we think is leading the way. You need to make a music video, you need directors, you need lighting people, you need actors, you need dancers. And we're not focusing there. We think the music industry is singers. Well, that's only one very small part of the music industry. Um, then you have the non-traditional arts, digital arts, film, animation, design. These are not receiving hardly any attention. And I think that we need to think about those as lead, um, as lead subsectors within the culture and creative arts sector. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. When the authority of the heads of government of the OECS and its other ministerial councils meet and adopt policies for the organization, they rely on the OECS Commission to transform these into action. The OECS Commission is the secretariat of the organization, a grouping of officials headed by a director general, mandated to implement the decisions of the governments, but also empowered to make recommendations on the strategic directions of the organization. The OECS Commission organizes meetings, prepares budgets, conducts research, undertakes projects, negotiates for and represents the OECS member states. It is organized along several components. There are the commissioners from each member state who along with the Director General form the commission that oversees the work programs. There are also technical divisions with specialized units between them, as well as diplomatic missions in Brussels and Geneva. All these complement each other to make the OECS Commission the engine of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean. The OECS has a proud past, and together we are working towards a brighter future for all our citizens. For more information, visit www.oecs.org. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. Minister responsible for youth development and sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, is suggesting there should be greater parity in nominations for the various categories of awards during the annual Youth Awards. Minister Estefan made the remarks while addressing Youth Awards last Saturday evening. Our shortlist was down to about 30 within 19 categories. We continue to observe that visual and literary arts are not very popular categories. However, the performing arts are more than quadruple with nominees. We also observe with a degree of sadness that there was barely a nomination for District Youth and Sports Council. Hopefully next year we will begin to see some changes in these nominations. The minister pledged that there will be continued improvements to the annual staging of the National Youth Awards. Perhaps through an online platform for nominations, which is more accessible to the young people. We note with great interest at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports the National Workers' Union, NWU, spirited efforts, spirited efforts in promoting youth development within the trade union movement. We are looking at including a new category at the Youth Awards next year to recognize the efforts and contribution of meaningful youth engagement within the trade union movement. We are gratified by the continued partnership and engagement with youth groups and organizations throughout the island. Our aim is to continue to build on these engagements until our youth are connected to opportunities and given access for them to continue to uplift themselves in the wider society. The Youth Development and Sports Minister also announced that the Youth of the Year will travel to Portugal in June 
to the Ministers of Youth Meeting and to attend the Youth Forum. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is encouraging physical education teachers to take advantage of the opportunity to receive certification as an international FINA Level 1 open water coach. It's being made possible as the St. Lucia Aquatics Federation will be hosting a five-day FINA Level 1 open water coaching clinic for anyone interested in becoming an open water swimming coach. Applicants must be 17 years and older. Open water coaching presents a different set of dynamics to pool coaching and requires its own certification as directed by FINA. The course is scheduled to take place from May 7th to the 11th. It will be conducted by world-renowned FINA lecturer Stephen Cassidy, who is a member of the FINA Technical Open Water Swimming Committee. He is also a member of the Board of Directors of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. School sports competitive activity is set to resume shortly. Among some of the events to look out for are schools under 15 cricket, scheduled to start May 14th, inter school swimming June 21st, and look out for the school sports awards set for July 5th. All useful dates to remember. And with that, we come to the end of your update on happenings in youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Solution Senate has welcomed a new member. On Tuesday, 30th April 2019, Francisco Jean-Pierre was sworn in as a government senator. President of the Senate, Honorable Janine Girodi McIntyre, informed that she had received correspondence from Senator Dr. Evaldus Raymond indicating his resignation from the Upper House. Senator Jean-Pierre, a taxi operator, most recently was the assistant manager of loans at the Library Cooperative Credit Union. He serves on the board of the Southern Taxi Company and has for years been an advocate for taxi drivers in the South. In his maiden address to the Senate, Senator Jean-Pierre expressed elation at government's plans for the south of the island, among them the redevelopment of the Huronar International Airport. The consideration to develop the port of view for as a cruise terminal, that is also significant. Mm -hmm. So I believe we are heading in the right direction in our tourism industry, yeah. an industry that I have benefited in for almost my entire adult life. Yeah. That's the industry that I use to send my children to school. And that was Senator Francisco Jean-Pierre. And do stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyant. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt this thing to my right leg. And when I looked back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours, you will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we can be known for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate supplies of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyol. Monsieur Madame du Patrimoine qui nous est responsable de pour information en gouvernement cette ici GIS ça veut dire Télévision Nationale puis à NTN qui a posé au Nouvelle Arcoyol pour cette au Primus Hutchinson. Du moins, finissement, semaine passée, le ministère de la Santé tenu pour renforcer la loi pour protéger le pays contre les mauvaises maladies qui peuvent être entrées dans cette ci C'est le chef officier médecin du ministère, Dr. Mullen Frederick, qui fait annoncement ça là. C'est le Dr. Frederick. Il était nécessaire pour empêcher les passagers à bord d'un bateau touriste de battre un pays parce qu'il y a trouvé une exception qui a petit cas de maladie, la région à bord d'un bateau touriste là. 
Donc, Frédéric expliquait les raisons, action de protection salariale, pour que ce salaire soit très nécessaire en effort pour protéger les peuples cette ci contre diverses maladies qui peuvent menacer la santé des pays étrangers. Mon Tedet, um, j'attends le ministre de la Santé parler de um, l'affaire de la région de la Ça, um, c'est une maladie qui, à présent, um, uh, pay, um, les autres pays comme les um, United States qui a um, mené un chai trois cas. Et c'est une maladie qui a mené un chai trois cas. Le, le, le point de um, vaccine, l'année vaccine pour lui, l'année ça nous a créé misos vaccina pour empêcher les gens de jouer misos, la région. Mais l'année, les le gens ne peuvent pas jouer à la vaccine, ils jouent à la maladie, ça là, à la maladie qui a fait à la maladie tous ces yeux, ils ont tout le rouge, ils ont ni un petit bagage, un rush de partout à ce so body. Yo et c'est une maladie aussi qui est um, bien dangereux pour um, les mamans et les gens qui ne sont pas trop forts. Chef officier médecin réfléchit mais le public là pour y changer que la région c'est une de mauvaise maladie qui a simé très rapidement. Pour la raison ça là, le ministre de la Santé pour faire une décision et ce n'est pas une décision que nous ne faisons pas comme nous. Nous jouons et nous parlons et puis... Um, les autres gens ici, um, les autres gens um, et, et um, spécialistes, en ça nous avons créé Pan American Health Organization, Caribbean Public Health Organization, tout ce les autres, um, les autres, um, l'État sala um, pour nous faire des décisions, et c'est une décision qui nous donne autorité pour faire à bas, ça nous a créé Quarantine Act et Public Health Act saint ici. So, nous te voulons expliquer ça parce que peut-être un monde où un bâtiment vini et personne ne descend et qui a des dettes qui qui ça qui est arrivé. So, nous croyons que c'était nécessaire pour nous expliquer ça. Dr. Frédéric a aussi fait public là, changé qui, comme cet lycéen qui a voyagé particulièrement en pays l'Amérique, il est nécessaire pour protéger les croyants contre ces maladies là et principalement pour tes enfants. Pour ça fait assurer que ces petits enfants trouvent la vaccine contre la mauvaise maladie. À son occasion, journée des travailleurs, le 1er mois de mai, enfin, c'était mercredi, le ministre de la Kini, responsabilité pour faire le travail au gouvernement de l'ICI, honorable Stevenson King, montré la gratitude de l'ICI pour travailler avec les employeurs PIA pour le service de la à contribution au développement de l'ICI en ce temps qui est passé. Dans l'adresse de l'observance journée pour les travailleurs pour l'année ici, le ministre King a déclaré que cette ici est bâtie à son fondation qui est établie par l'organisation des travailleurs. Le King fait un grand appel pour que le pays ne pas oublier de ces gens qui étaient engagés dans le mouvement pour travailler à temps passé, de tumuler et de web pour assurer que les travailleurs pays ont trouvé une bonne récompense pour la contribution à le développement de l'affaire économique du pays. On a King aussi, par garantissement, là qui département pour faire le travail, qui fait tout ça qui est nécessaire pour assurer que le travail, c'est de se trouver toute satisfaction à la loi qui travaille et pour voir qui a trouvé respect et pour voir aussi que ce principe-là, il a trouvé implémentation. Le ministre King, par assurance, là qui le gouvernement a continué pour agir il y a un effort de collaboratif, un façon d'engagement, et puis tout ça qui n'est pas l'intérêt oui, pour assurer que l'année est bon comprendre la paix et l'unité en relation de climat industriel, en fait, une meilleure relation à travailler, employer et gouvernement. Les cétriciens qui ont gagné un salaire qui n'a pas été fortifié, en chemin pour espérer ces bénéfices dans un projet CAI qui s'est posé commencer tout de suite par l'organisation Assurance Nationale, c'est ici, ça c'est NIC, initiative ça là, c'est pour aider à adresser les nécessités pour les gens acheter des bâtiments qui sont capables de financer. Présentement, NIC a gardé ces diverses propriétés qui ont et pour faire cet assessment, côté de ça, sélectionner ces propriétés ça là pour commencer le projet. Le projet nouveau ça là, c'est le commencement 
pour un plus gros projet de développement qui qui a une plus grande facilité pour euh, recréation affaires commerciales à parmi l'autre. Projet A, projet 9 ça a pris en considération ça mon plus nibisin et construction qui a été faite pour pour tuer des gros services là qui chaque monde qui a eu sa point l'avantage qui n'a pas eu une force à s'approcher. Ces établissements résidentiels qui ont bâti en divers modèles et qui sont sortis d'une façon pour développer et faciliter pour les gens qui ont fait ça. Ils ont bâti d'une façon pour résister des désastres naturels, aussi pour entretenir de l'eau, la pluie, en bas de l'autre nécessité. Et ici, il y a conduit le projet Sala en collaboration et puis les instituts comme le Banque de Développement National cette ci et le ministre qui est responsable pour faire ça. Et c'est comme ça que nous faisons là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder et pour vous faire une invitation. Je vous remercie encore pour vous présenter à l'autre nouvelle accueil. À présent, nous allons vivre pour Michel. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Skies are fair, occasionally cloudy and breezy with scattered showers. A moderate to brisk easterly wind flow and above normal seas will continue around the Eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds moving with the wind flow will bring some scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbour high at 2.40 p.m., low at 8.08 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay high at 3.47 p.m., low at 9.35 p.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves of 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.41 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.